Let g be a group of order 5 or smaller. We're going to prove that g is actually abelian. So we're basically proving that every single group of order 5 or smaller is abelian. So let's, let's take cases. So if the order of g is equal to 1, then g, well, its only element is the identity. So it's abelian. So one down, <laughs> four to go. Now, if the order of g is a prime number smaller, smaller than or equal to five, so if it's two, three, or five, then g is cyclic by a previous argument, hence abelian. So done in that case. The only case left is when g is a group of order 4. So if the order of g is equal to 4, let's take cases. So case 1, or rather subcases. <laughs> uh, case 1, g has an element of order 4. So if g has an element of order 4, then g looks like this. It's the set containing e, x, x squared, and x cubed, and it's cyclic. So if it's cyclic, then it's abelian, so abelian. Case two. Case two would be g does not have an element of order four, so g does not have an element of order 4. So it does not have an element of order 4. Well, we know that the order of any element in our group G, we know that the order of any element has to divide the order of G, so it has to divide 4. So the choices are 1, 2, or 4. So we're saying that it doesn't have an element of order 4. That means that every element has order 1, and two, one or 2. So then every element of G has order 1 or 2. Right? Every single element of G has order one or two. Let me change colors. So this means that for all x and g, x squared is equal to e. Because if it has order one, it's the identity, and the identity squared is e. If it has order two, well then x squared is equal to e. So this means every element is its own inverse, its own inverse. Hence, we can do the following. Hence, for all x, y, and g, we can look at the element x, y, and we said that every element is its own inverse. So this is x, y inverse. But this is y inverse, x inverse. But every element is its own inverse, so this is yx. And this holds for all x, y, and g, so g is abelian. It really, really is uh, a beautiful argument. So we've basically proven that every group of order 5 or smaller is abelian. So I think the tough case is when g has order 4, especially this case right here. g does not have an element of order 4. And again, just to go over this part again, if it doesn't have an element of order 4, then we know by a previous result that the order of x divides 4. So the choices are 1, 2, or 4, but it can't be 4, so it's 1 or 2. And that means this equation is true for every x and g. This means that every element is its own inverse, and it follows that g is abelian. So I hope this helps.